Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an extended event to find long running queries and long running store procedures within SQL Server. The idea of the event is to find the worst offenders in your environment, highlight those procedures and tune them to improve the overall performance of your SQL Server. So I'm going to expand extended events, expand sessions, I'm going to right click on sessions and select new session. I'm going to call this queries over 10 seconds. In reality, you'd probably want to change this in a production environment, say 30 seconds or 40 seconds. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to show you how it works with a shorter duration or else this video will go on forever. I'm going to select to start this up at startup. I'm going to highlight my events. I'm going to look for RPC completed event. I like that. And SQL batch completed. Select configure. I'm going to highlight both of those here and I'm going to add in my client app name the name of the query is running against, my plan handle, I'm going to put in my client host name, session nt username, SQL text, and we'll leave it at that for the time being. In a production environment you might want to put the username in there, that will show you who is actually executing these queries. It's either going to be an employee or a site, a website or a service, a service name, service ID. Um, you might want to put an NT username as well for that. I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to add duration. So I'll expand that and I'm going to do a greater than 10 and I'll do six zeros. I'll go to my storage. I'm going to log this to a file. For the purpose of this, I'll do it maximum size of half a gig, which will be fine for this. I'm going to just move back to my events. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to remove this because I've accidentally added it. So those are the only fields we need and I'm going to select OK. As you can see, I've created queries over 10 seconds. If you're interested in a SQL, you can script that, you can create that. And this will provide the, the code to create that event. So if you've got 10, 20 SQL servers within your production environment, you can script that and just run that over each SQL server and it'll create it as we've just done then. Let's close that for now and let's start running some queries. So I'm going to use master, which it's already using. And if I do a select star from sys.databases, this comes back straight away. So let's add in a delay of 11 seconds. So it's going to wait for 11 seconds, then it's going to execute my query. And because it's waiting for 11 seconds, this event's going to flag it up. So that's now running. Just down here, you can see the six, seven seconds. And that's now completed. So let's open up our event. We'll look at our file and we'll view target. So let's sort by timestamp. We can see this is the one I just ran a moment ago. We can see all these fields down here that we've got. So if we want to add in client host name, I 
can show that in my column. And we can see that this query here was the query that I just ran. We can scroll down here, we can, we can see who's run it, we can see how long it's taken. Now what's great about this is we can sort by duration. So in a production environment, we can sort, find the worst offenders, we can find the query, and we can tune that. So what I've done, I've turned this into a store procedure. So if we go into master, find my procedure. Queries over in seconds. So I'm going to run that. And I'm going to run it for 12 seconds. So after 12 seconds, my query will execute. Sorry about the wait, another 12 seconds. So what we've done here, we've used the procedure and you can see what's been passed into it. However, if I was to just pass in five seconds, that also executes, but a lot quicker. But let's have a look at the results within that event. Close this. Refresh it. So we can see the queries over 12 seconds has appeared, but the previous one that we ran in five seconds hasn't appeared. Now what's important to remember here is the stored procedure isn't actually our problem. What's our prob what the problem is, is the variable we're passing in. So it's always worth considering that you might have a stored procedure that's taken ages and ages to run, but only with certain variables that pass that that are passed in. So in this case it works perfectly fine with 5 seconds but not, not with 12, not with 20, not with 30. So we could open up the stored procedure. I could show you it just if you're curious, which is just exactly what we did earlier. And we, we could tune that procedure and improve our overall environment. Or we might even speak to the offender and say please stop running these queries in a production environment and save them for a testing or um, environment. So I'll leave that open in case you wanted to recreate that stored procedure in your environment. If you've got any questions or want any procs sent over, then let me know and I'll send them over to you.